Welcome to the video everybody. Today I'm going to be talking about having a healthy lifestyle with an ileostomy. Now these five points that I'm going to go over are broad but they can be applied to anybody no matter what culture you are, what sex you are, no matter who you are. I'm hoping that some of these points will help uh, and some of these points are going to be easily implemented into your life to make some changes so that you can continue to have a healthy lifestyle even though you have an ileostomy because an ileostomy doesn't stop you from doing anything. I'm a power lifter, I lift quite heavy weights. Uh, on Instagram, if you just type in ileostomy, you'll find a huge amount of people who are doing some incredible things and they have an ileostomy. So if you're new to having an ileostomy or you've had an ileostomy for a long time but you're looking to improve parts of your life through your health, then give this video a watch, give it a like, and uh, let's get into it now. first point I want to get into is accepting your ileostomy. Now that's a very short sentence but it's a very difficult thing to do. Accepting your ileostomy can take a lot of time for some people. Some people adjust very quickly and some people don't. Everybody is different and how you come to having an ileostomy is different. Some people have cancer, some people have Crohn's, some people have ulcerative colitis, some people have been in an accident or they've had a perforated bowel therefore they ended up with an ileostomy. Some are permanent, some are not and that's just a very short amount of differences but there is even more that I've not mentioned. Everybody is different and it's going to take some time to accept your ileostomy. Now some resources that could help is uh, the Crohn's and Colitis UK website. They have a thing called the Companion, they have call centers, they have people you can speak to, people you could message. I know it's for the UK, but I actually don't think that they care if you call from somewhere else or you get in touch from a different country. I don't actually know, but I assume they're a charity and they'll accept anybody that they can help. Not only that, but social media can help as well. I find that there are some good uh, Facebook groups, there is the Ostomy Athletes group, there is Making Ostomies Awesome, there are many many more um, but I find sometimes they can be a little bit negative so I wouldn't spend too much time on them, I would you know give other people some help, uh, get some help yourself but don't spend too much time in the forums because I feel like some of it can be quite negative. Now the more positive social media is Instagram, I know there's TikTok as well, but I... Fuck you! I... <laughs> TikTok is its own weird thing that I don't get. But uh, Instagram, I think, is probably one of the best positive platforms. I'll put up my name here. Uh, there's a lot of other people on there. If you type in ileostomy as a tag and just look at how many people there are, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, some people doing some incredible things. And hopefully that will give you some inf uh, motivation. Maybe you can reach out to some people. They will answer your questions to help you get to terms with living with this ileostomy. So that's the first point is accepting your ileostomy because it shouldn't hold you back and it won't hold you back. If you're determined to have a specific goal or if you're determined to do a specific thing, it will, it will not hold you back if you really want it to happen. And there are people out there that are doing some amazing things that prove that point. So however you do it, accept your ileostomy. In a lot of scenarios, it saved your life. It is not an ugly, gross thing. It is an amazing feat of medical not engineering but well engineering but it's an amazing medical feat that saves a lot of lives and i'm very grateful for having it if i didn't have it i wouldn't be here uh, and i've had my ileostomy for 13 years point number two is a little bit more in my wheelhouse which is protein <laughs> and when people think of protein they think bodybuilders and like chicken and rice which rice doesn't have protein in but they just think of like chicken and meat and whey protein and protein powders and this and that and <laughs> but it's not the only thing that protein is good for protein in higher doses is very very good for you especially if you have an ileostomy now before somebody says high protein diets are bad for your kidneys there's actually been a few studies that pr prove that 
high protein diets are not bad for your kidneys and they're not bad for your bones they're actually a little bit good for your bones but in studies it's hard to track bone health because they take so long to change and adapt so the only time that a high protein diet is going to be bad for your kidneys is if you already have damaged kidneys from any condition that causes damaged kidneys why do i want you to have more protein well for someone with an ileostomy, protein is going to be really beneficial because it slows down your digestion. Uh, protein is a very complicated macronutrient and it takes the longest to digest than any other macronutrient. And whilst it takes uh, longer to digest, it also burns twice as much calories to actually uh, get that protein into your system. So carbohydrates and fats don't take as long to be absorbed by the body, but protein does, and it actually has a thermogenic effect, which burns more calories. If you up your protein, you're gonna get, uh, your di digestion is gonna be slower, which is gonna be better for you with an ileostomy, so because you only have your small bowel, you're going to be able to absorb more nutrients uh, in that time, and also it's gonna mean that your bag emptying is gonna be a little bit less frequent, which a lot of us can benefit from, especially if you're working, um, you're working outside, you don't wanna to go to the toilet too many times because you wanna focus on your work. Having a bit of a higher protein intake in each meal throughout the day is gonna slow down that digestion, but it's also really satiating. So it fills you up. So eating more protein and having protein in every single meal, it's going to make you fuller for longer than carbs or fats will. And this is gonna be really beneficial so that you don't overeat. Now, I have protein in every single meal, and I think that no matter what diet you're on, no matter what culture you're from, no matter what sex you are, having protein in every single meal, between 10 to 30, and sometimes up to like 50 grams, is going to be beneficial for you. So, you can look up calculators for how much protein you should have, but protein recommended daily amounts for the UK, I find, and I'll put them on screen, I think that they're quite low. For someone who trains, the recommended daily amount for someone who is a trainer would be this amount. Um, and I'm actually on the higher end of the sliding scale. Someone who I mentioned in my previous video called Jeff Nippard, he made a video all about protein. He's made quite a few videos and I would highly recommend watching that. I will link it below. So the next point is gonna be fruits and vegetables. So having fruits and vegetables in your diet is essential. You really do wanna get as many colors into your diet as possible. However, with someone with an ileostomy, that's very difficult, but there's a lot of fruit and vegetables that are gonna cause problems. Now, like I said at the beginning, we're all different. Now, I know someone who can't have strawberries because of the tiny seeds, but I can have strawberries and I know other individuals who can, so I can't tell you what fruit and vegetables that you should be eating, and nor should I do that anyway because I'm not a dietitian. Dietitian, dietitian. So because of that, I'm just going to say that you need to have fruit and vegetables throughout the day. There's the five a day rule in the UK, but really you wanna try and go for as many as possible. I would say every meal you should try and have a protein sauce and a fruit or vegetable sauce. So, and not a sauce as in like ketchup, but a sauce as in like, you know, in the morning I'm gonna have a protein shake, a banana and some toast, or I'm going to have uh, a natural yogurt with some granola, you know, things along those lines. I'm going to have um, eggs for breakfast with some peppers and some onions and some mushrooms, which I'm gonna make sure that they're super, super soft so that they don't affect my ileostomy. And some of those things, there are people out there who have on a regular basis like me, and there are some people who are like, mushrooms, oh, I can't have those. And that's not a bad thing, but you're gonna have to learn what you can and can't have. So another tip, which is, isn't a part of the five, but it would be to track what you eat, either by using something like my fitness pal, which you can scan your food in, or just writing it down. Because if you eat something you have problems, you and you've had loads of food that you've never had before, or you've implemented three different things throughout the week, you don't know what they are if you can't remember, and you can't identify, well, I've had this multiple times and it's, and it's never bothered me, but this is new and this is new. And then you only have one of them and you're like, okay, I'm okay. And then you try the other one and then you're not okay. And you're like, right, it's that one. That's the one that's giving me problems. I'm gonna get rid of that. So you're gonna have to experiment, find what fruits and vegetables work for you. But I do think that everyone 
can have fruits and vegetables in every single meal throughout the day. If that's you who eats one meal a day, if that's someone who eats two, three, four, five, six, eight meals, however many meals you have during the day, you should be able to have a fruit or a vegetable with it. So in this point, I'm gonna talk about exercise. You know, something that's, I'm talking about something that's not too strenuous so you can fit into your daily life and more or less 99% of the people watching this are going to be able to walk, but probably a lot of us don't. We wake up in the morning, we get into our cars or we get on the bus and we get to work and then we sit down and we sit there all day. There are people obviously who have physical jobs who don't do that, but a large majority of us have jobs where we do sit down or we do travel a lot of the day where we don't walk. So tracking your steps and trying to get in around 7,000, maybe 10,000 steps every day isn't that hard. Um, that's maybe 30 minutes of walking, probably less to get about 10,000 steps, depending on how quickly you walk. But it's not that hard to do. I've been trying to implement this as much as possible. Um, I have two breaks at work that are 15 minutes and an hour lunch. And during those times when I feel like the weather's good enough, I do go out for a walk. I try and walk at the weekends. Alex and I do like hiking. And it's going to keep that, because when you get an ileostomy, you feel like you can't do much, but you will be able to walk. They do try and get you to walk before you leave the hospital to see your mobility, to see if you can go to the toilet yourself, empty your bag. So walking and trying to implement that is gonna be really beneficial. I don't care if you're a strong man, bodybuilder, powerlifter, I don't care if you're a rock climber, I don't care if you're a, like a, someone who goes on kayaks, whatever the name is, whatever the sport is, whatever the activity is, if you're either struggling with your weight or you're having some, some mental issues, depression, Try and go out for some walks some more. Listen to some positive podcasts. There are apps like Mind and Calm that can help with uh, dealing with depression and anxiety. And you can listen to those while you walk, listen to music, um, but try and be more active. And walking is a simple, easy way to do that. You just get up, go outside. And uh, I don't think you have to go to a gym to have a healthy lifestyle. I just think you have to move and the one thing that we can probably all do is walk. The last point that I wanna make is sleep. We all sleep, and I bet a lot of us don't get enough. For athletes, you really wanna get seven to eight hours sleep, even more if you can, and that's any athlete. If you're a normal individual, you definitely wanna get at least seven hours. Now, if you don't think sleep is beneficial and you're like, oh, I, got, I have six hours sleep and I'm up and whatever, if that's you, then fine but at least go to bed at the same time and wake up at the same time. Every day, probably an hour either side, uh, shouldn't mess up your rhythm. But sleeping is so beneficial, especially if you've had surgery. This is where you're gonna recover the most. Uh, you wanna rest, have a decent rest. Now, something that I use to help me get to sleep, because I do struggle getting to sleep, I have a very active mind and imagination, and I always get kind of an anxiety about going to bed because I'm like, I need to sleep, I know it's good for me, blah, blah, blah. Something that I've found is a, there is the app Calm, but I prefer a YouTube channel called The Honest Guys, and they do sleep talk downs. I will link it below, but they're like, they do like meditation before sleep. Now, meditation has shown to be beneficial for a lot of people, but this isn't just for me about meditation, it's just something to, I focus on it and all of those thoughts that pop into my head, they just, I can kind of put them to one side. I like, I pick them up and I look at them in my mind and I put them to one side and I do that. And that seems to get me to sleep. So I highly recommend that YouTube channel for helping you get to sleep. Or if you want to meditate uh, during the day or you want to de-stress, go and give that channel a look. It's really beneficial. Now, why is sleep so important? Well, I've mentioned this study before on my YouTube channel. I'm going to mention it again. So there was a sleep study where two groups uh, were on the same diet. They were on a deficit of, I think, about 500, gram, uh, 500 calories. Either way, they were on a diet for a certain amount of weeks, and they lost the same amount of weight. However, one of them slept for about five hours, and the other group slept for seven hours. It's five to six seven to eight, and the group that slept the least lost more 
uh, lost more muscle mass uh, than the, the ones they slept more. So they lost the same amount of weight, but these people lost muscle, these people lost fat. A huge, huge difference. Like these lost so much more muscle mass. Now, if you're dieting and you want to retain as much muscle as possible because you know you want to look big and lean, you don't want to look skinny fat still. You want your protein to be high and you definitely want to get your sleep in. And this study just shows how important sleep is and how much of a difference it makes to everybody. So if you recovered with an ileostomy, get enough sleep. And also if you have Crohn's, colitis, cancer, all of those other things that might lead you to having an ileostomy, you're going to be fatigued throughout the day. You might even suffer with chronic fatigue. So having a really good sleep schedule is going to help you. Uh, if I find a video about how to get better sleep, I will link it below. But some points that I do is I try and make my environment at like outside. So the later it gets, the darker my environment gets. I try not to look at my phone uh, an hour before going to bed, even more if I can help it. So like eight o'clock at night, I put my phone to one side and I don't look at it anymore unless I need to just put my alarms on for the next day. Um, and then putting the, the YouTube videos on for the honest guys. I then go to bed. Uh, I don't have television in my bedroom. I just have this big one downstairs in my living room. So when I go to upstairs to the bedroom, the bedroom is for sleeping and it's for getting ready. And I don't watch stuff in there. I don't sit in there and watch. Uh, some nights when my mind is really active and the like the talk downs aren't working, I'll read. Um, I'll either read on the Stronger by Science kind of website so it's really in-depth stuff which makes me think a lot so it ties me out or I will just read a normal book um, the one I'm reading at the moment is by Wilbur Smith I've read a lot of his books they're quite good so that's something that I do to try and help me sleep and uh, that's it for this video those are all the points so if you made it to this point and you're awake <laughs> uh, please like the video give it a comment below I do think that implementing these into your life is going to give you a healthier lifestyle a lot of the time I get asked where do I start and I think these things that are technically free that you can do can implement and will improve your life are the things where you should start you should start like with the small things before you go and do a big thing you know you don't want to just completely change your life you I mean you could but a lot of people can't stick to that so manipulate things within your life that you already have so your eating habits getting more protein in getting a fruit and vegetable in during every meal getting more sleep you know going out for a couple more walks and accepting your ileostomy accepting who you are as a person and hopefully all of those points will help you and if they do uh, give this video a like and i'll catch you guys in the next video peace